morning. Welcome to today's lesson on solving multi-step inequalities and more importantly on graphing inequalities. Really the, the, the key here is going to be graphing because as we saw in the last video that solving an inequality is exactly the same process wise as solving an equation and there's just that one time when something changes and that's when you multiply or divide by a negative number. So assuming that that's the only thing you have to be on the lookout for, we already really do know how to solve uh, multi-step inequality, but let's look at a couple really quickly, and then we're gonna go into salt, we're gonna be going into the graphing part of it. So again, we're gonna ask you to solve, and we're gonna, I'm actually gonna say there's gonna be some other stuff we're gonna talk about in the next video about what happens when there's different placement on the variables. So we're just gonna stay with the basics for right now. Okay, so really, um, let's look at a very, very basic one. Oh, let's make it easy on ourselves. 2x plus 7 is less than or equal to 13. And remember, it's always important to be able to read these, know what the, the inequality sign says, um, so that you understand the context. Maybe, maybe there's some other applications. But we solve this the same way. We're looking for parentheses. And if we see any, we're still going to do the distributive property. Don't have any. Then we're going to combine our like terms. And again, we only do that if they're on the same side of the equal sign as each other. We don't cross over. Then we're going to get the variable on the left. And this is actually going to be really important um, in the next lesson we actually look at in, in the next video because we're going to see what happens. What if, the, what if the variable is on the right? We're even going to see some with what if the variable is on both sides if we have to deal with it then. But we'll, we'll, we'll take care of that when we get there. And then again, we finish it up with the sad me. We're going to subtract or add. We're going to divide or multiply. And we're not even going to talk about exponents in this situation. So again, we go through the, the, there's no parentheses, there are no like terms, the variable is already on the left, so we're going to just deal with this. There's some subtraction, we're going to subtract 7 from both sides, and then we're going to divide both sides by the number next to the variable. And we get that x is less than or equal to 3, and we got to remember, our, our answer is not 3. That is not the answer. The answer is all the numbers that are less than or equal to 3. So we want to make sure we're always talking about this encapsulated this group of numbers that is all of the numbers that would make this work, and that is all the numbers less than or equal to 3. Now let me show you one that I really do like, that I think, it, strangely, this is a two-stepper that so often gets students to really struggle, okay? Let's even make it a little harder on ourselves. It's this minus sign that seems to trip everybody up. They see the minus sign and they think, oh, I should be adding. But unfortunately, that minus sign is with the 2x. And if you're not sure, this would be another time to put, you know what, let's, let's write it a little lower. And let's put some queso on it. We're going to keep that 5. We're going to switch this to addition. And we're going to change that to a negative 2x. Now we are still no parentheses, still no like terms, variables are still already on the left, subtract. We've got this five we have to get rid of, and we get rid of it by subtracting. That leaves us with a negative two x is less than or equal to nine, and then we're dividing. And when I do it, I divide by negative two. Those are all the magic words, divide, by, and negative. And when I divide by a negative, I'm gonna turn the inequality sign to face the other direction. I'm not even going to reduce this. I could, I could turn it into a decimal, negative 4.5. I would never turn it into a mixed number. We just don't do that because in all honesty, mixed numbers stopped being useful about a year ago. Um, if you see mixed numbers, you almost invariably have to turn them into decimals or more likely even still uh, improper fractions. Because we just, if we want to do math with them, we have to turn them into something more or usable. But there's that, that moment where we need to remember what's different between solving an equation, this set of steps, and solving an inequality, same set of steps, just, hey, um, when 
multiplying or dividing by a negative number, we must turn the inequality sign around to face the other direction. Now the alligator wants to eat the other side. And that's just because that's what's the truth, okay? Where here we want it, you know, we would think, okay, it was gonna be less than nine, but what it really is gonna be is greater than nine halves, negative nine halves, greater than 4.5. Any positive number, if you think about it, five minus, original problem was five minus two X. So a five minus anything is always gonna be less than, anything positive is always gonna be less than 14. So five minus two, five minus 10, five minus 100, five minus, so any five minus is gonna be less than 14 as long as the number is bigger than negative four and a half. Okay? So that would be solving your typical two-step equation, or sorry, inequality. Um, if we wanna go up to three, we can. Um, maybe something simple, just something easy. We say, what if it were three times two X minus four equal, is less than or equal to. And really, remember, that's what that symbol is. It's, it's essentially, you look at it, it's less than, and then there's the equal to part of it. It's really, that's why it's those two symbols put together. Uh, let's say, and let's make it uh, 10. Make it easy on myself. So I would do my distributive property Three times two x is six x. Three times four is negative tw negative four is negative twelve. Now I'm going to add that twelve to both sides. So six x is less than or equal to twenty two, and I'm going to divide by six. I did not hear the the word negative, so I'm not turning the sign around. I can't. I don't want to do a decimal here, but I can't leave it as an improper fraction because it's not reduced. They're both even, so I can divide them both by two, and I will get 11 thirds. And I don't even want to turn it into a decimal because that's a repeating decimal. So in the, its current situation, it's just a fraction 11 thirds, no problem. But if I had to turn that into a decimal, I would have a repeating decimal, which would be very difficult to graph, <laughs> I should say, and, very, and it's not any easier to graph in this position, but it's still um, less desirable for mathematics that follow if you have a repeating decimal that you have to work with. So here's what it looks like when we solve a, you know, here we had the distributed property, everything, the like terms were already combined, the variables were already on the left, we just added, then we divided, okay? That's solving two and three step inequalities. You can see if we wanted to go to four and five, it's really not that big a deal, it's not that much extra stuff, it's stuff we've already done, it doesn't add any level of difficulty. So let's get to the, the heart of this lesson, which is what to do, how to graph an inequality. Okay, so how to graph an inequality. Okay, so let's just start right away with, there's really, four possibilities, okay, um, right? We saw the, the four types of inequalities. There's less than, greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, okay? So assuming that the variable, assuming, so if the variable is on the left, Okay, that's one of the reasons, remember I've been saying get the variable on the left, now why do I want to say that? Because I want to be able to use this. If the variable's on the left, this is less, well, sorry, let's do it without, let's do less than. So this is less than, and that is an open dot and shaded to the left. You can almost see it like an arrow pointing towards me to the left. So if I had x is less than 2, so here's my 0, here's the number 1, here's the number 2, I'm going to put an open dot, so I'm circling the 2, but I'm not, and then I'm shading it 
to the left. And when I shade, I have to shade all the way. I don't stop at zero. I shade all the way out here to this arrow. I even make sure I shade in the arrow because that way I'm telling you that as long as this arrow is going to continue towards me, I'm going to keep shading it. Because any number less than two could be one, zero, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative 4.5, negative a billion. As long as I'm going to the left, I'm shading to the left. Okay, now that's the less than. The next one would be this one. And actually, I'm going to write a little bit lower. This would be less than or equal to. Now, how does that differ from just the less than? The difference there is this is a closed dot, meaning the dot is, or is actually going to be shaded in, and we're still going to shade to the left, because that's what less than, less than, left, that's kind of nice and easy to remember, L, left, less. So if I have x is less than or equal to 2, so again, here's 0, here's 1, here's the number 2. The difference is, instead of this open dot, I'm going to shade it in. And then I'm still going to shade to the left, and again, all the way to the arrow, including the arrow. Now, why is this different? What's the difference here? The difference is, the number 2 works here. And it doesn't work here. If I put the number 2 in, can I say that 2 is less than 2? Well, it's not. 2 is not less than 2. Can I say, so it doesn't, it's not included. It's like everything up to it. 1.9999999 is okay, but 2 is not. Here, does 2 work? Is 2 less than or equal to 2? Well, yeah, it's equal to 2. 2 is equal to 2, so 2 is less than or equal to 2. Therefore, 2 is okay, and it needs to be shaded in. It needs to be in this shaded part, okay? So that's why this is an open dot, and this is a closed dot. If it's open, I like to think of this as like, this is like an open mouth, so it's an open dot. And this is kind of like a close, like this is the nose, and this is the closed mouth, okay? Or I, I use this analogy occasionally, like it's... A lot like uh, before a store opens on on Black Friday if this there's no line so it's open because they're already inside here there's a line it's because they're waiting outside it's still the store is still closed so if you see that line it's closed if you don't see that line it's open now obviously if we swipe these and go the other direction, this becomes greater than, which again, whoops, no line there. And that means we're gonna to shade to the right. So now if I have X is greater than two, again, I'm gonna set up my, here's my zero, here's my one, here's my two open dot, and this time I'm going to go to the right, all the way to the arrow. It's pointing in that direction. Okay, and again, if we went with the greater than, if we do this, then it's greater than or equal to, it's still a closed dot, but again, we shade to the right. There's one, there's two, close the dot and shade it to the right. Okay, so that's gonna be a big part of what we're gonna be looking for when we're doing our assignments this week is how to graph it. And I usually just start to ask myself when I see it, what kind of a dot, which way do we shade? The number is obvious. This is the number you're gonna start at, okay? Sometimes students want to start at zero because they just feel like it. And I'm telling you right now, there's the number you start at. Then you ask yourself the following. Okay. So what kind of dot? Okay. Open or close. Those are the only two options. Is 
the number part of the solution or not? Is there a line under it or not? If there's a line under it, it's closed. If there isn't, it's open. And then which way do we shade? And that, again, this really is easier if you've got always the variable on the left-hand side. If the variable's on the left, you can almost see that inequality sign like a little arrow pointing in whichever direction they want you to shade. Because this is just less thans are to the left, greater thans are to the right, okay? But again, only if the variable is on the left, because if the variable is on the left, then it's all the numbers, that's what the variable represents, that are less than or greater than. So let's look at, let's kind of do one whole problem of, let's solve it, let's graph it, let's see what it looks like. So, and you might even get that as a homework assignment, it'll say solve and graph, okay? And then they'll give you something Again, we're not going to give ourselves super challenging, but uh, you know what? Why don't we give ourselves one really good hard problem? Let's just do, and we're only going to do the one. So this is the last example. Let's go 5x minus 2x minus 3 is less than or equal to, let's go 15. Uh, seems like a good enough number to me. So first we have this minus sign that we have, we've got a parentheses. We've got to immediately do our distributive property. So again, that's going to be step one. And again, I don't have a number here, so I need to remind myself that it's the number one and that I'm distributing it all the way, including and making sure that I know that's a negative three. So I get 5x minus 2x plus three. So negative times a negative is a positive, is less than or equal to 15. Then we're going to combine like terms. 5x minus 2x is 3x. And then we are move the variable to left. Variable left, which is already done for us. And then again, the sad me part. So we're going to subtract 3 from both sides. So 3x less than or equal to 12 and we're going to divide by 3, x is less than or equal to 4. Now, it would have been nice if I would made it a negative and made it extra challenging, but this still was four steps, which is more than I'm going to be asking any of you to do in the, in the homeworks. But I am going to ask you probably from about here to be able to show, and then the graph. So, see, I think that, yep, my, so here we are, 1, two, three, and here we are at the number four. So we know what number we're gonna start at because it's the only number I have to work with. X is less than or equal to four. So I'll ask myself, what kind of a dot? Well, that's just this, is there a line under it, yes or no? If it's yes, it's closed. If it's no, it's open. Well, if there is one, so it's gonna be yes, it's gonna be closed. Which way do we shade? Well, this is less than, less than is to my left, which means towards me, all the way to the arrow, including the arrow. And that's what it looks like. And if you're, and just to play it safe, if you're not sure, you're like, well, I think I did that right. Try out a solution. Make sure it works. Take it all the way back to the original problem. And what solution should you try out? Zero. Try zero. Even if it's, try it if it should work, try it if it shouldn't work. Make sure it does what it's supposed to do. So if it's supposed to work, make sure that it does. If it's not supposed to work because it's not in your shaded area, make sure it doesn't. But I say it works because it's in my shaded area. So I'm going to say, does 5 times 0 minus 2 times 0 minus 3, is that less than or equal to 15? Well, 5 times 0 is 0, My, so 0 minus, 2 times 0 is 0 minus 3, so negative 3, is that less than or equal to 15? Well, minus a minus would be positive, is 3 less than or equal to 15? It sure is. Then I know I, I feel very good about this answer. I feel very confident that this is correct. I feel secure that I have grafted in the correct direction, that I have everything right. It's a perfect example if, if I, maybe this is that moment where I forgot to flip the sign around because it was a negative, and I immediately find, hey, it doesn't work. It's supposed to work, but it doesn't? Oh, I wonder what I did wrong. And the most common, most obvious answer is, you forgot to flip the sign around, okay? So again, 
we should know what kind of dot, open or closed, less than or greater than, and again, all these things only really apply if the variable's on the left, and we'll talk about what happens if the variable's on the right in our next lesson. Okay, but I think this is good for now. I will see you guys in class or in office hours.